Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Yashica FX70 Quartz. It's from about 1980. That's the pre-Kyocera days of Yashica. It has the contact Yashica mount lenses, which is nice because there are some really sweet uh, contact lenses available for this camera. Right now I've got a du jour wide angle on it, uh, 35mm f2.8. The camera has a uh, vertically traveling metal shutter. It's good for 1 1,000th of a second to 11 seconds plus bulb. Everything in this camera uses the quartz timing, including uh, X-Sync and bulb, so you got to have batteries. It's through the lens, center weighted uh, averaging, uses cadmium sulfide uh, sensors for the metering. It's aperture priority auto exposure. Um, the auto exposure lock is this lever here on the front where you would expect the self timer. Um, there is a 10 second self timer. It's this lever in front of the shutter button. Um, when that's going on, the uh, LED on the front of the body flashes. Another odd location is the cable release, and that's actually kind of a misnomer. It's on the back right here, and then even though it looks like a little circle, it's not a mechanical cable release. It's electronic. They made a specific cable release. They made a uh, radio controlled remote release. It does uh, plus or minus 2 EV uh, exposure compensation. All you're doing really is moving the, f uh, the film speed knob to these other positions. It works just fine, it's well labeled, just it's kind of nothing special. The viewfinder, uh, it's pretty nice and bright. It has shutter speed LEDs along the right side. It has one at the top that says over. Uh, if it's going to be overexposed even at the, uh, the fastest shutter speed. And then the bulb at the bottom will flash if it's going to be uh, an underexposure. There's also a light in here called LT. It's for long time. Is the shutter speeds go to two seconds and then long time and then bulb. So long time is anything uh, between two seconds and 11 seconds. A little bit odd. Uh, it's pretty informative though. If two LEDs light, it means it's selected a shutter speed in between the, the two indicated speeds. So it's pretty informative. There is no metered manual mode on this thing. It's always aperture priority auto, auto exposure. Focusing in the lens is pretty nice. Um, it's got a split image and then a micro prism around that. And then the whole uh, viewfinder is a matte field. So it's pretty easy to get spot on focusing. Flash sync, um, it doesn't have a PC socket, it has a a somewhat smart hot shoe. Uh, flash sync is at a hundredth of a second. Um, if you're using a dedicated flash for this, it was the CS201, or there were a couple of context models, the TL, the number's escaping me right now. But anyway, two context flash models will automatically set the shutter speed to a hundredth of a second. It uses uh, two SR or LR44 batteries. So thankfully it's really common batteries because you gotta have them 1.5 volts. Um, the battery test, uh, you put the batteries in, turn it on, and to turn it on you basically put it to X, B, or auto. If the LEDs flash at a steady rate, four per second, your batteries are fine. If it does two flashes and then there's a pause and two flashes, it means your batteries are getting low. You better wrap up what you're doing and put fresh batteries in here. There's not a lot of control, but with the good display, 
you can actually sort of shoot shutter priority, just monkey with your aperture until it selects uh, the shutter that you want to shoot at. Exposure compensation, primitive as it is, it works and works pretty well. This one had a couple of problems. Amazingly, the uh, body covering coming off wasn't one of them. Um, I worked on the seals and I was shooting with it. And there's also another problem that these guys get when they get old. The mirror is glued to the mechanism that lifts it up. And after a while, the, in the inertia, the glue softens a little bit and slowly the mirror will slip down so that it gets to where if you are focused far away so that the focusing element is pretty far back, the mirror will stick on the back of the lens. I was already shooting with it and this one developed that problem so I guess it hadn't been shot in a long time. I, I like it in spite of its shortcomings being, you know, got to have batteries, no manual mode. It's really fun and considering I only got about seven shots out of a roll um, before it started manifesting that problem, I got great pictures with it. So I'm going to get a heat gun, soften the glue, move the mirror up, let it harden again, and then it should be good for another, whatever it is, close to 40 years. So I'll fix that mirror, run another roll through it, and I'll see you then.